Stay tuned to meet a man who stood for his convictions in a dangerous environment. My name is Yvonne Shelton, and you're watching Urban Report. And welcome to Urban Report. My guests today are Pastor and Mrs. Paul Dosunmu. The pastor is a chaplain and the author of Dare to Be a Shadrach in a Communist Land, an inspiring autobiography about taking a stand for Jesus in the midst of a dangerous environment. Welcome to Urban Report. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. It's Thank you. So nice to have you. So nice to have you here. Thank so. You. You have an interesting story because you, you, you were in a dangerous environment. But mm. before we get to that, yes. tell us about your background. Give mm. us a little history. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, um, Sister Yvonne. I was born in a Muslim, you know, into an Islamic family. Um, I'm from Iraba, Oruago, in Kwara State, Nigeria. Um, I was born as I said, into an Islamic background, but the kind of uh, Islam that my parents actually, um, you know, practice was a type that does not, you know, maybe forbid dabbling into some other things. Um, for example, uh, there was a combination of Islamic faith and African traditional religion. And as a matter of fact, uh, in the world today, uh, there's quite a huge percentage of people who practice Islam together with uh, um, uh, it's called folk Islam, um, whereby, I mean, some authors say about 40%, 50% of Islam worldwide is actually, uh, you know, folk form of, of, of that religion. Huh. So uh, in addition to going to the mosque to worship, to serve, uh, there were still, you know, some idols at the corners in our homes to which we also, my parents will render offerings and sacrifices. So there would be um, like altars to these idols yes. in your home? Yes, yes. But yet they still worshiped Allah? Yes, they still go to the mosque. And as a matter of fact, uh, I had the opportunity of speaking with some people uh, not long ago. And they said, well, Islam does not really forbid that kind of a combination. Hmm. We call it syncretism um, in the study of religion. As a matter of fact, my PhD dissertation is on the phenomena of dual allegiance. Anyhow, huh. yes, um, I, I um, right while still living in my village at a very young age, there were a set of twins, you know, who were, I mean, whose parents were already Christians and they were attending the Evangelical Church for West Africa, which was basically the main, I mean, the predominant, uh, uh, you know, Protestant church around where I actually live and grew. They will invite us, you know, from time to time, maybe during Easter, during Christmas, but we'll shun them, okay, until sometimes in 1975, when I got to, you know, move to a city called Ede in Oshun State now, in Nigeria to live with my elder brother, who was in the Nigerian army. And uh, he used to, um, he was a member of the Jehovah's Witness. Mm. Yes, so from time to time he would, uh, you know, talk about Jehovah, talk about the Bible and so on. Well, I was still a Muslim. I was still practicing my faith, even at that very young age. I located the mosque in the, you know, in the city and we'll go to the mosque to go and, you know, uh, 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 worship, do the salat, and so on and so forth. But he told me more about Jesus as time, you know, uh, went by. Um, members of the Jehovah's Witness in that particular city will come to our home and study the Bible with us. Sometimes mm -hmm. I will join them, sometimes I wouldn't. Well, my time for conversion eventually came sometimes in 1975. Okay, 75, 77, around that particular time, um, when uh, just one Easter Sunday, I took my brother's Bible from Alnanetis Pilo, 
and went to the chapel that was actually located in the army barracks. There and then um, the story of Easter was told. Mm. The crucifixion of Jesus, the purpose for his dying on the cross, he came to die for the sins of the world. That was a very beautiful story that kind of uh, resonated with me because in the former religion, uh, you know, it's what you can do, what you have to do to mm. be saved compared with God has done everything for you. You know, I think that's such a good point, Pastor Paul, because uh, I'm going to call you Pastor Paul or Pastor D or Mrs. D, if that's okay. Yes, yes. Um, because in so many religions, it's about what you do. Yes. Christianity is about what's been done for, for you. us. Absolutely. Yes. So what a difference, right? It, yes. And prior to this, prior to your learning about Jesus, were, did you have any kind of connection with Allah? Well, in, in actual fact, it was pretty, you know, empty. The connection wasn't that uh, strong. Even my parents that one would have actually looked up onto to be example or standard of the faith, still had some other things that they were actually, you know, bound down to, despite going to the mosque. I mean, to me, uh, the experience of salvation actually struck home when, when that, the gospel of Christ, you know, was explained that we are actually saved by God's grace yes. through our faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. So that, uh, that, that was the point of the conversion. I mean, we we're told to open up our hearts and accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord, which I did there and then, and it, uh, it worked. It worked in the sense that Jesus came into my heart, came into my life, met, you know, me at the specific points of my needs. And that was a moment of transformation and change in my life. Yes, mm -hmm. so you, you converted to Christianity, but you didn't convert to the Jehovah's Witness yes, that's right. denomination. It, that's right, because the, the chapel that was in the uh, army barracks where I lived was basically, um, you know, a pro-Anglican mm. setup. Mm -hmm. But there and then, on that Easter Sunday, the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, I had the connection. Yes. Okay. So now moving on, um, uh, you know, I will, I will always be in the church to listen to the word of God. We studied the Bible. Uh, we prayed. And all this, I mean, all, the, all these had its impact in my spiritual growth. And uh, uh, I was kind of open. Any church that invited me to come and study the word with them. I was always there. I would listen. I mean, just to kind of build up my faith until, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I eventually went, went to an Adventist high school mm -hmm. in Nigeria. We call it Adventist Grammar School, Ede, in Nigeria. Well, uh, despite the fact that I attended that school, it was no longer a boarding school. It was already taken over by the, by the government. So, but we, we still had studies in the Bible and so on and so forth. But my point of conversion to Adventism did not really occur then. God had to take me to a communist country for me to accept the Adventist faith in a very, very uh, interesting you know, situation. Okay, well, the more or less the seeds, just as Ellen White talks about the fact that we may not be able to specifically say, oh, this is when this happened, its influence, its impact, wherever, you know, the spirit of the Lord works upon the mind and teaches us, reveals things to us, then there is that particular moment when God says, okay, this is the truth, my son. Yes. Yes. So when I got to the communist country. I well, well, before okay. you got yes. there. Yes. No, no, no. This is, no, this is great. This okay. is great. But before you got there, yes. how did your family respond to your conversion? Okay. By this time, it was only my mom that was alive. Mm. She, she saw the transformation and the change that uh, had occurred in our lives. And she welcomed it. As a matter of fact, before she also died, she accepted Jesus Amen. as a personal Savior and Lord. Or and for them, for them, it's like for me, it's the same. For me, uh, my parents Muslim, but I transitioned to a Baptist, not fully at 14, 13, 14. Mm. Um, 
and it was not, and I didn't feel anything because they said the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. So, you know, and then from there, I was sent to uh, Adventist school, boarding school, kind of like Calumet. Now, where did you grow up? Liberia. Liberia, yes. okay. And so um, at Konala, my mother, time to get baptized, they sent you home to ask for um, permission from your parents. And so when they sent me home, he said, do they serve God? I said, yes. They read the Bible? I said, yes. She said, then it's up to you. And that's how I got baptized. Wow, as praise the Lord. Adventist, yeah. Now, did you two meet before you went to Bulgaria or after? After. after. Okay, so tell us about Bulgaria, and then we want to hear how you two met. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I, after my high school in 1984, I became a teacher in my village. By this time, I basically crossed over to a church called the Deeper Life Bible Church. It's a fairy Pentecostal uh, mm. church in, in, in Nigeria. It's all over the world now. Um, anyway, that, in that church, I grew to know more of commitment, consecration, dedication to the amount of light that is known. Okay, so, I mean, if I had remained in Nigeria, I probably wouldn't have changed. But God knew what I needed. Yes. So he took me away from that environment, Amen. took me to a communist country where I met a Seventh-day Adventist believer. His name is Odomsi Akyoku Yantachi. He's actually from Ghana, and we were roommates. Now, how did you end up in Bulgaria, okay. though? From was, Africa to Bulgaria. To Bulgaria. Yes. I mean. <laughs> well, there was, there was what was called the Bureau for External Aid Scholarship, which I applied. I was qualified on the basis of my West African School Certificate uh, results. I was qualified. I applied. I went for the first interview, the second interview, the third interview. Eventually, you know, I was given a scholarship. So I went to Bulgaria and I studied um, agronomy and crop science to the master's degree level there in Bulgaria. Now, isn't it cold there? It was very cold. So it what was, do they grow there? Oh, well, they grow... They grow <laughs> potatoes? They, well, they grow wheat, they grow potatoes. They, there was also, you know, peaches and, okay. you know, and so on and so forth. Anyhow, so I met with this young man from Ghana. And uh, we lived together in the same hostel room. And she came with the treasures of the spirit of prophecy. Um, the great controversy, the desire of ages, mm. and so on. I was actually initially preaching to him uh, from that, you know, dynamism and the, the kind of, you know, faith and the kind of encouragement we got from, you know, the, my former church. Then, of course, we studied the Bible together. Because there, the whole environment was atheistic. You know, it was socialism. And the socialists were, you know, really against God, against the Bible, against religion, and so on. Yes. So with this, my brother from Ghana, we were able to connect. And in the process of studying the Bible, you know, back home, when I was in all that, those other denominations, I would preach the gospel on, on train coaches, on, in buses, in taxi cab. I tell them about the love of God. So when it came to these studying the Bible with this brother, uh, the fact is that the ABC of salvation from the human side begins when a man realizes he's a sinner and, uh, and that he needs help. And sin is defined in scripture as disobedience to any of God's laws. The Bible says if you keep the old laws and yet offend in one point, you're broken all. So whilst, whilst I was going out to preach the gospel, I would teach all this. But the point of the fourth commandment was not uh, clear. Mm. You know, the, the question I have asked is that, well, it was changed because of uh, Jesus resurrected on the first day of the week. But is there really any Bible backing for that? There you go. Anyway, so I was with this brother. He had a very wonderful knowledge of, you know, Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, Revelation 13, Revelation 14, uh -huh. you know, and uh -huh. when all these became clearer, um, the Bible prophecy talks about the rise of an anti-God power who would think to change God's time and laws. Right. And history fulfills this particular change. Well, uh, then there is a need for reform. Isaiah tells us, you know, you shall be called the repairer of 
you know, the, the bridge, bridge, the restorer mm -hmm. of the past dwelling. You know, if you turn away your feet from the Sabbath, you know, so the, the, the point on the Sabbath became very clear. And I had no choice but to accept the truth of God's word. Amen. Yeah. So it, that's, that was how I became an Adventist in Bulgaria. Wow. Yes. With your roommate. With my roommate. Studying the yes. word. Yes. And as a matter of fact, after that experience, he left Bulgaria. And I was left there in Bulgaria. But of course, we connected with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In, in Bulgaria at that time. So the, the story is actually written, yeah. you know, of my conversion and my experiences here in this particular book. Yes. And uh, um, I, I mean, the journey, I am so glad it went that way uh, because getting to Bulgaria in such um, a desert land, yes. if you will, when it comes to spirituality at that time, um, God still had the oasis from which we could drink and, you know, from Amen. the water of life. Yes. And that eventually led to my conversion to Adventism. That is Amen. beautiful. Amen. That is be it's so interesting how God orchestrates our steps. Yes. He, he guides us, uh, guides us. Yes. He brings us to where we need to be. Yes. To go to the next level. Amen. Now, Sister D, tell us how you met your husband. Um. My husband at um, All Nations Seventh-day Adventist Church in Minneapolis. Oh, you met him here? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. And so been... did you just see him and it was it love at first sight? Or um... was it... <laughs> Well, for it me was it good. was, <laughs> for me it was, you know, because uh, at that time I, I had to move on in my life due to experience, you know, from the first marriage and I needed support. I needed a companion. I prayed, I fasted, I waited upon the Lord, I made attempts, approaches, and to the glory of the Lord, she said yes. And we are very glad that we are both together today and both together in the ministry. Amen. To the glory Amen. of God. Amen. Yes, yes. Now, what do you do together now? Right now, um, from the two churches, he's a district pastor, two churches in Minnesota. So we um, minister, you know, from church to church, family life as well. Yes. Nice, yeah. very nice. And all along, um, before I actually met him, um, I was a um, hospitality leader for, the, for my church. Uh, and also, I used to help with, um, the breaking up of kids in the church, you know, in that shepherdess um, uh, role. Yeah. <laughs> so you were a counselor in the church, like in, counseling, in the, uh, helping people to stay together and not break up. Well, for for now, it's family life, but then was hospitality and helping with the kids. Ah. You know, celebrating the children, yes. helping to keep them. So I have a lot of God children in the church. I always say 13 God children in the church. Yeah, my yes. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, doing that, God was preparing me as well. And all along, Amen. you know, after we met everybody in the church, said, God prepare you as a mother for the church because that's the role I kind of play most of the time when I was singer mm -hmm. in the church, mm -hmm. playing the role of a mother. And the being church. the first lady is a calling as well. Yes. It's Amen. not just, you know, the pastor who's called. Yes. Amen. The wife has to be called too Amen. because it doesn't work Amen. if you're Without. if you're not Amen. a team. Absolutely. Amen. So praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. The Lord knew what you needed. Exactly. <laughs> he knew exactly. what you needed. Yes. Now, Amen. Tell us what happened, how you stood up for God yes. in the communist land. Tell yes. us how that happened. Yes. Well, when we got to Bulgaria in 1986, mm -hmm. um, um, one of the things the Bulgarians were doing uh, the communist socialism then. I think the initial original purpose was to bring these young people to the socialist country, you know, convert them to socialism, uh, try to, you know, um, ideology passing 
pump into them the, the socialistic ideology mm -hmm. so that by the time they re return back to their homes, uh, home countries, they can, you know, push the communistic agenda. Right, right. Yes, so that was the initial purpose. So by the spring of 1987, uh, the school intended to, you know, uh, uh, sponsor an excursion to some very, very important places of importance in Bulgaria, the history of Bulgaria, and so on and so forth. So well, we went for this excursion, and uh, we saw several places of delight, very beautiful places in Bulgaria at that particular time. Now, we went to an art gallery, and then coming out of the art gallery, we were led to a very uh, small park, narrow park, um, and then at the end of the, at the head of the park was a statue. Uh, this statue was made up of black marble, polished marble stone, where the names of, you know, um, a man, his wife, and five children. And uh, the lady who was our hostess and who was guiding us and directing us to these places was telling the story that uh, this statue represents a family of uh, seven that were actually um, massacred mm. during the fascistic regime mm. in, in Bulgaria. And uh, as she was about to begin the next statement, I heard a voice more or less very clear that, Paul, <laughs> where you are standing, if you do not want to sin against God, you better move away. Mm. So I decided to move away. Amen. When I move away, I went stay a little bit further away and then my friend, Odomsi, uh, through whom I, as I said, accepted the Adventist faith, was right there with them. He looked at me and beckoned me to come back, but I told him, okay, just leave me, you know, don't worry. Um, when I got to where I was looking down, I saw that we were at the, end of, at the head of a very long park and that uh, there were two Bulgarian women sitting on one of the benches. And then there was a little girl, probably a granddaughter to one of them, was playing with a blue, blue ball. Um, as I was examining them, all of a sudden I saw that they paid their attention, diverted their attention to the group of students in the front of the statue. And when I also turned, I saw that every one of the students were already on their knees mm. in the front of the statue. Kneeling before the statue. Kneeling before the statue, except one. And that one person was my friend. Adomsi Akioku. Adomsi uh, just, I think, uh, just left his position as the registrar to the, Vi uh, to the Valley View University, mm. the Seventh-day Adventist University in Ghana. Uh, I think uh, he just, you know, maybe uh, resigned or maybe retired or moved on to do his doctorate degree in another university in Ghana. So when he got to me, um, you know, I embraced him, hugged him, and shook his hand and said, God bless you, brother. And he says, yes, God bless you, too. <laughs> and so uh, we decided to move on towards the bus, you know, because we were in a bus, long, you know, uh, uh, coach mm -hmm. that, you know, took us around. And uh, by the time we turned, we saw other students a little bit further away from the statue who had their knees also on the ground. And they were pointing, you know, pointing to the group of students in the front of the, uh, of the statue saying, why don't you do likewise? And we said, no, we wouldn't do that, you know. Mm, so yeah. uh, because the first and the second commandment says, That's right. uh, don't have any other God apart from me. And don't no. make unto yourself any graven image. Don't bow down to them. Um, so mm. in a case to live an obedient life to God, yes. we decided to leave. Now, when we got to the hostel that night, um, the thought came to my mind and said, well, this was, uh, you know, what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. So why don't you write the story <laughs> right of what just happened? <laughs> yes. And lo and behold, um, that's I, what this book is. That's, yeah. That was how this book yes. came into being. Now, I, how can people get this book? Okay, well, we have a website mm -hmm. um, called twemi.net. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it's on the screen. Yes. If you go to that website, there is a shop there where you'll find this book and uh, several other books that God has given me the grace to write. Yes. Uh, so yes. Um, um, we, we, we have the books available there. And uh, the TWMI is actually, you know, the Watchman Evangelistic Ministries International, 
which is uh, basically his self-supporting ministry, mm -hmm. evangelism, a uh, uh, ministry of, of this family, of this group that we intend, we dream, we dare to dream. Dare to dream. Yeah, we dare to dream. Yeah, we dare to dream <laughs> to do world evangelism yes. as much as the Lord God will give us the grace and the ability to do. So what are some of your, uh, what, is, what is your vision for your evangelistic initiative? Yes, we do, as I said, um, uh, you know, we dream to evangelize. Uh, one of the major places we'll be, we're, that we've been praying for uh, that God will provide the means for us to do is go back to Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. um, um, before becoming an Adventist, I actually started a student group, a student fellowship group there, uh, through which I, you know, I was anticipating the initial church that I belong to will be established in that particular country. But when the truth of God's word downed on me, there was a need to relearn so many things. Okay, so uh, part and parcel of that dreams and aspiration is going back to Bulgaria and run public evangelism as much as the Lord will give to us. Um, we're also planning to go to- um, Parts of Africa. Yeah, parts of Africa. Yes. Uh, Monrovia being part of, you know, uh, uh, Dar es Salaam in, in, in Tanzania and uh, Lusaka in Zambia. Um, uh, places also in Nigeria, we intend that by the grace of the Lord, to go run public evangelism there. Yes, so that's, uh, that's the goal, that's some of the dream. Currently, as I said, I'm working as a district pastor, um, you know, with the Minnesota Conference. And the conference has a package, a kind of a way whereby ministers here can go run evangelism, um, you know, both in America here, as well as any other part of the world that we choose to. So at least a nation per year, that's what is, you know, in the, in the system over there, you know, with the Minnesota Conference. Yes. So we are hoping to be able to raise funds uh, that are essential for us to go forth out and run this evangelism. The, 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 the first one we intended was to, you know, do this Operation Monrovia, mm -hmm. uh, whereby we, we are in connection with the union um, um, we're in connection with the union and the centers, you know, goals and, and so on and so forth. Hopefully, mm -hmm. by the grace of the Lord, as the Lord allows it, yes. we'll be able to go run evangelism. Amen. Oh, that'll yes. be wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, the Lord, the, the harvest is great, yes. Yes. right? The laborers are few. Yes. So the Lord has work for you to do. And we are so grateful that you came and shared your story Amen. with us today. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Thank Amen. you. And we know that the Lord will continue to order your steps. Amen. 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 So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. The Lord has a plan. That's what we always talk about here. And so we know that he has a plan for you as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us next time because you know what? It just wouldn't be the same without you.